Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good, good afternoon. Good, morning. good evening. And good night. Oh my God! It's twenty past twelve. We're doing no. this in the afternoon. Oh my God! And yet you seem so chipper. I'm so happy. Hi. I'm so excited for this episode. Through the fog, step forth the trusty hogs. Yeah, you're gonna give them your problems, and they will solve them, or maybe they won't, and that's your problem. They'll have guests. Tech. Oh, it's Helen and Catherine as the trusty hogs. Trust the trusty hogs, or maybe not. I absolutely love when we have guests on, and I know I adore it. Oh, by the way, welcome to episode. I should start again. Wow. That was crazy. I got ahead of myself. Wow. I got ahead I of myself. I love it when we have guests on, but guess what? We're not having a guest today. Anyway, it's Trusty Hogs. No, I'm just saying <laughs> hello. Welcome to episode 79 of Trusty Hogs, the podcast in which we tell you about, let's face it, our frankly perfect lives. And then Indeed. we try to help you with yours because they seem kind of stressful. You're welcome. Yikes. Um, but today we are doing... A mailbag special. Which basically means we get to sit here and we listen to all your drama, your gossip, your stress, and then we just solve it really easily. Can I be honest? May I? Yeah, please. My goodness. Helen and I are... Look, we've seen each other a lot this week. We've seen each other a lot this I week. I love you. I love you so much too, but do we have any news? We peed in front of each other and oh you never God. let me do that normally. Oh, okay. I mean, you've yeah, seen me pee, poo, everything so many times, but this is the first time I've seen you pee pee. You said you were looking away. Well... Everyone takes a sneak, right? Helen! Because no one's looking up the entire time you pee because you have to go to the toilet roll and go, no one's doing that blind. Okay, first of all, may I say, I didn't... It comes out ginger. The carpet does match the urine drapes. (laughs) It doesn't even make any sense. It doesn't even make any sense. If that is how it works. It doesn't even make any sense. No, because you're too dark a red, like even with a Barocca orange, it wouldn't quite get there. Oh, my pubes are lighter, but that's none of your business. The point is, it's weird because I don't even see the sun. Look. (laughs) You're always just so waxed, it's hard to tell. That's true. Okay. Are you okay? um, You look sad. Yeah, but I just want to clarify that I didn't let you... What, like into the cubicle with me. I think you did. No, Helen, there the were three of... empty cubicles. You were Four. like, do you want to go in together? Yes. One of them was out of order. You were like, do you want to go <laughs> in, in together? I said, no. She's like, come on, let's pee together. I said, I don't want to. You said, we can chat. And I yeah. said, I don't want to. You said, poor Helen. And I said, I, I don't want to. And then you... Yes. I don't remember that. Then I, I said, I'm going in here. And then you pushed your way into the cubicle after me, closed the door and said, too late. And then started taking your pants off. For friendship. Are you serious you didn't like it? Because I no, thought you enjoyed the chit chat. I was actually surprised by... <laughs> How much you enjoyed the special time. I enjoyed the level of comfort you had. I and I also enjoyed what I didn't think was possible. I honestly thought the reason that we couldn't do it is I thought I'd never, ever, ever pee in front of like... My you won't morning. even, like, even when we're in a, like, communal toilet, like, if it's just the two of us in there, I have to play music out yeah. loud. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I, so what I thought would happen is that I wouldn't be able to even wee because, as you know, I have an uptight pelvis and, yes, um, yeah. frankly, uh, an uptight vibe. Um, <laughs> so I just didn't think I'd be able to wee. But then you talked so much. It was like when you played the radio. Yeah. Um, and so ultimately, yes, I did get uh, I did get going and that was nice. Actually. Turns out I'm friends with a lot of women with like really funny wombs. Not wombs, what's it called? Urinary you ball? Think <laughs> urinary ball? What's it called? The urinary sack. The urine chamber? Are you? Where do you keep it? Bladder! Bladder! Oh my God, I got there. I think I've got friends with a lot of women with like really shy bladder syndrome. So like I've got used to the fact that you just have to chitter, chatter away the whole time. Or you leave them the fuck alone while they try to pee. No, but it's good for friendship. (laughs) Also, we were at one of those parties where like if you try and chat with someone, someone else comes over, someone else comes over. There's like nowhere really to be or to go. It was a bit tricky. Can you just, can we just circle back? Do you think for a second that we came from the womb no wait no 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 I know that we doesn't come from the womb I know that we came from the womb well done yeah as people very funny very good thank you very very droll Droll. actually very droll (laughs) very droll Um, that's what Helen says to me anytime I say anything that's a joke (laughs) that she has to think about she'll never laugh she'll go very droll. I just, I love Very saying droll. droll. I just droll. think it's the funniest way. It's such a pass like way of being like, I'm not giving Oh, give incredibly you that. droll. Thank you, Andrew. I'm not going to give Andrew's you Andrew's very droll. He is. He's Don't very you droll. think? He really is. <laughs> Incredibly. Um, yeah, so um, listen, that happened. And I yes. do feel closer to you, but only in a way where like, 
I guess I, know, I now feel like I understand Thank Sunil's you. life a bit better. No, I have to close the door at home. I know, but... He's I, been very clear. <laughs> and I think that's right. I do think that's right. But I also feel like I get how the non-consensual cuddy club began now. I still think you have to accept that when you're housemates, consensual hugging is just a given. Mm. And I'm sick of saying it. Cause I like, don't think that's true, but Because we live together, so we're so like emotionally linked. And I cried again the other day and he hugged me. What? Yeah. And he didn't like freeze up for too long. Whoa. Classic period cry. Genuinely oh, thought the world girl. was ending. I know. Poor I little Helen. That. It's the worst. It it's was worst. so bad. And I was like feeling really so emotional. And I've just been watching these like really intensely sad films, apart from The Emperor's okay, well, New Groove, which was very good. Isn't it a joy? Oh, wonderful. Is that bad llama? Bad llama. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nah, no, oh, you're hot. Nah, no, oh, you're hot. <laughs> like it's so, so good. Also, David Spade. So that's comedy in yeah. many ways. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But I've just been like, I sort of like really let into this period and I tried to get him to hold me and he did. And then the next day I was still sad and he came in straight for a cuddle and then he brought me like three Kinder Buenos. Whoa. Thank you very much. And then I bought him a Kinder Bueno a couple of days afterwards say thank you for the Kinder Buenos, but he didn't eat it for like 24 hours. You ate it. And it was just on the coffee table. And I I woke up and I was like, oh no, (laughs) no, I want a Kinder Bueno. (laughs) And he was like, oh, what are we going to do? And I was like, oh, no, no, no. That one, and then I ate it. Yeah. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I was so hungry, and I love a bueno. You're not hungry. I've seen your house. There's plenty of food in. Yeah, there's so much. There's it's like food. living inside of a larder because we get so overexcited. It honestly is. I walked in and I was like, it's like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory in here. And <laughs> Helen was like, do you want a chocolate? And I, oh, she's like, do you want a chocky? And I was like, yeah, go on. And then she was like. You spent maybe seven minutes listing my options. <laughs> By the end, I was like, um, ah, uh, yeah, uh, just, um, and then I, and then I panicked and ate Sunil's lint. <laughs> yeah, you did, you did, you went for the one thing. I was like, you can't have this. And that's the one that you were like, but I want the but lint. I want that I one. want Sunil's special want lint chocolate. <laughs> I, um, I think basically what happened is I did a couple of gigs recently where I got paid in cash, which, do you know what I mean? Like, even though, like, you don't believe in cash. It's like it's like money. monopoly. Yeah, because it's like it's it's different, isn't it? Mm, it's still real currency, but okay. So, and also, I believe in supporting small businesses. Can I just say that? No, because one's in social that. mobility no one's is in bloody awful, support. and we should all use small businesses instead of giving our money to big pharma. How about that for once? Thank you very much. Don't buy cowpaw. Buy something from an Italian deli. Thank you very much. You love cowpaw. So, oh, cowpaw's the fucking best. Don't get me started. But buy it from an independent. I've always said that. Don't get your cap off from Superdrug. Get it from a news agent. You know, absolutely no one anyway. doubts that you support small business. You could do with supporting your own small business occasionally. I forget that I'm a small business. Mm-hmm. It's mad, isn't it? Oh, business, Helen. Anyway, um, I got paid by cash. You know you're a sole trader, right? And I, huh? You're not actually like called a small, but you're called a sole trader. What does that mean? Okay. Am I am I trading in fish? <laughs> I'd rather flounder. <laughs> it's just a bit of fun because of soul. <laughs> is she a cobbler? We don't know. Andrew, very droll, right? Very droll. Thank you. Very yeah. droll. I do want to do your taxes. <laughs> okay. Um, can I just say this? Yeah. Um, I have got very into Italian delicatessens, mainly because they sell the littlest biscuits. Oh, they do? They're <laughs> cannoli? <laughs> yes. Mm. Oh, so good. There's a cafe near me that does a pistachio cream cannoli, and it is fucking insane. My problem is I can't really eat the biscuit part, but I like the cream part. Oh, so you so do I the tongue often, thing. Yeah, I mean, classic gay, but also the woman uh. in the Italian deli up the road from me has started making gluten, gluten-free ones, but instead of actually making gluten-free ones, all she's done is like, got enough Florentine and rolled it. <laughs> and I'm like, this is so bad. Like, you know when you put me in your mouth and you're like, my teeth hurt. Like, my, my face hurts. My fa-. And I eat some. Now that's a small business that we should be supporting. And she I sounds do. incredible. And I do. Let me tell you, Sandra has so much of my money. It is crazy. I also like the little, like, you know those packs of Italian biscuits they sell where, like, the package is, like, sort of like a brownie cream colour and it's like, they're like, little nickel, little Italian wordy um, chocolatey. You know? <laughs> do you know what I mean? The nickel a lot of chocolatey. Is it xenophobic now? And it's Feels like um, little now. biscuits and they've got like Nutella inside them. No. Okay, you guys, I'm going to find them and then put up a picture because it's incredible. Okay, thank you. I really appreciate thank you. that. Should we, um, we said that we weren't going to talk and we were just going to answer properly. Oh my God, yeah, sorry. <laughs> But equally, like, that did feel like a problem that we needed to address. So, um, okay, well, listen, Andrew. Next up, 
pooing together. No, absolutely not. Can I just quickly say something no. before we do this? No. What is no. more difficult? No. Pissing. I said you can't say it. You asked. Changing a moon cup or pooing. Like, what would you rather do in front of me? Like, gun to your head. Like, gun to your head, Catherine. I'd rather we or change a moon cup in front of you. Then poo. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Andrew, let's have a problem. Why are you uh, like okay. this? Why would you make me say that? I'm curious about my friends. So shoot me. <laughs> Very droll. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew. Um, well, this is a mailbag special. We have two physical pieces of mail in our mail what? bag which is very exciting one of them's a gift for me I one of them know. is a gift for helen see yeah, on the floor. you already figured that out <laughs> thank you um do you know what's worse about this what? though um I, I won't show it to camera because it has my address oh, actually no, that's fine i'll cover it up um it says it's addressed to um helen bauer comma trusty hogs <laughs> excuse me which is terrifyingly um Oh, what lovely yeah. handwriting that person has. A very nice handwriting. Oh my god, it's such a beautifully done box. Andrew, I think you're covering the address with another envelope with your address on. Oh no, it just says PS on the back this this oh, card. Okay. Oh my god, oh my god, I come on, like, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Andrew. Wait, who's the envelope for? The, the the card is for both of us. It's actually a Christmas card, which I've accidentally sat in my flat for ages. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at this first. I'm only four. <laughs> oh, I wish you well. That's gorgeous. Oh happy, my God, I happy love holidays. That is actually amazing. And there's glitter on our little towelies. Oh my God, it says, P.S. If you're looking for homemade cards, jewellery and Highland Coos, my Etsy is Blue Tippy. Blue Tippy on Insta. Truly? These cards Blue are Blue Tippy. Mm. And I will be looking for... Oh my God. Oh my God, it's a properly lovely long message. She got it. So it says, to the trusty hogs crew, Catherine, Helen, Andrew and M, Merry Christmas. Thank you Listen, so much. What is it, Easter now? <laughs> just wanted to say this is my favourite Christmas card because it's not it doesn't come with the dread of Christmas yeah. it's just a random Christmas card in spring I mean we would have had it at Christmas if Andrew wasn't ironically hugging it and <laughs> <laughs> very droll just wanted to say how much I love the pod it's the highlight of my week got my friend Claire into it too oh we love people who tell their friends Claire hi Claire and we came to see Catherine and Helen's shows at the Fringe Claire found it cathartic talking about her break about your show Catherine oh that's so nice why was she talking at my show <laughs> I have Helen vibes and Claire is more Catherine, so we feel very represented each episode. Thanks for introducing us to more fab comics. My fringe list was ridiculous. Oh, That's preach. so nice. Wait, oh, this is, is the person who tweeted the schedule with all of our guests. No! Yes. We love you. Best wishes for 2023. Love from... Oh my God, you're going to love this name. Taylor. Taylor. I just saw it. I fucking love the name Taylor, Taylor so much. Taylor is such a Helen. Claire is such a Taylor Catherine. Taylor is such a fun name. Don't it's, you love it? And they put their pronouns in the card. I love our listeners. Please, what are the pronouns? She, her. She, her. Hi, Taylor. Hi, Taylor. Um, Hi, Taylor. Claire. Thank you so much. Hey, Andrew Claire. promises to do better in the future. I'm, yes. uh, can we add this to our table? Oh, yeah, that's lovely. I really think we should. It's going on the table, Taylor. Ooh. Bloody hell. Next Ooh. to our other gorgeous artwork. Isn't that We've lovely? made it. Um, can I please? Yes, don't show my address on camera, please. Okay. Oh, oh, is it a birthday present? It says on the back who it's from. May, May Williams. Don't read out their address either. Okay. Thank you. Canterbury, though, very nice. Right? <laughs> <laughs> At least say Kent, Jesus Christ. Oh, oh no, but Canterbury and Kent's very different, isn't okay. it? Yeah. They have oh, beautiful handwriting. Oh, bubble wrap. Oh my God. Okay, it's a letter. I'll read it first because oh, I'm polite now. Handwriting. What does it say? Helen, happy birthday. Hope you get lots of prezzies, especially from Catherine T. Fuck Love you, the May. pod. Snort, snort from May in Kent. See. Said Ken anyway. P.S. Be kinder to Andrew, please, both of you. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, sorry thank if we've you. been unkind. Uh, I, May, I don't. What, I don't feel workplace bullied, but thank you. I love you, Andrew, and I do appreciate you. And I'm Andrew, sure say I don't it say it. I don't feel workplace bullied. Thank you. <laughs> Can we just, I appreciate you, Andrew, and I don't say it enough. And Em as well. Thank you so much for everything you do. I appreciate and love you both. Thank you, guys. Catherine, go. Compliment circle First them. First of all, I do think the people at home should know that they are paid commensurate with their work. Compliment circle They're them. They're safe. They can leave any time. Please don't leave us. Um, no, truly they are. Don't open it yet. Oh, you've opened it. I was trying to apologise to Andrew. Andrew, I thought we treated you quite... No, I, I, you, you always show me lots of gratitude and love. I'm very grateful. I think I do. Genuinely. I, 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 I don't did think a joke Catherine does enough. Like, we were mean to him and then he stopped getting ghosted and got a boyfriend. So maybe it works. Sorry. That's something <laughs> to be said. Bit of tough love. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so I love you, you, Andrew. Sorry. I love you too. <sighs> oh, 
Em wouldn't want me to say that. That's okay. why I, I, I love her enough to know that she You're a piece of shit, that. bitch dick. Bitch dick? Bitch dick. Bitch dick? Do we not say bitch dick anymore? I like it. I like it. <laughs> BD, that's your new name. No, is it my turn? Okay. <laughs> what is it? It's from, oh. What is it? It's some sort of art. But when I first like opened it and looked at it, it said the word sheep, but it actually doesn't. It says studio, but I read it wrong. <laughs> what is it? I think it's a platey. <laughs> What oh my it? god, do you reckon it's like a Diana commemorative plate? Don't no, guess. No, it don't won't guess be. I won't guess. You open it. It's You're going to be disappointed. <gasps> what is it? What is it? You're going to be so jealous. <gasps> what? It's a personalised trusty hogs. <laughs> what? Let me hold it. Me... Oh my god, my tits look amazing. Can we? Can I That's have one? Fantastic. <laughs> amazing. It's got little pigs all around the edge. Helen. And it's from, wait, you guys, Rachel Williams, Black Griffin Studio. That is amazing. Illustrator and ceramic artist. That's Whoop. so fucking cool. Oh. We have to tag them both on Instagram. Yeah, and um, uh, please, please, um, May, can you contact me and tell me if I can wash it or not? <laughs> is it a display paint or can I eat my cannoli off it? Oh my <laughs> God, this is absolutely Mine, incredible. <laughs> that is really cool. I will put a picture on Instagram. Um, but yeah. That's so, what if we got one of those little display things and put it here, sat up on it? Like on no, our... but it's mine. I know, but what if we shared? Or not. <laughs> I guess it's for your cannoli and cannoli. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I love it so much. That is so Oh gorgeous. my God, do we have any more gifts? Because it was my birthday. That That's all of them, I'm afraid. Helen, that is such a good gift. It's such a good the, gift, Oh, you and your sister. Honest to God, you buy them something, give it to them, and they're like, great, what else? And you're like, <laughs> I thought that was the, I poured so much love into it. I'm gonna wrap it up really carefully. I think stunning. you're right though. I should get like a little like one of those like plastic display things yeah. and leave it in here. Oh, have one cannoli off it and then we'll talk. Yeah. Bawa, 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 bawa. Okay, next. <laughs> this is the best day ever. That's so cool. I know. It also just makes up for the fact that no one here has got me a gift yet. <laughs> Helen. Yeah. No, I know we're just having fun. Helen. I have got you a gift. It's just an experience, and you'll know when it's happening. Have you actually? Is it a flash mob? Yeah. Is it the trip to the farm? Helen. Is it a goat experience? Helen. Can okay. you just Yeah, no, I'll be chill. Thank you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Is it a thought pop? Can you just be quiet? No, okay. Just be quiet. Andrew. Hello. I think it's time for um, <laughs> some mailbag stuff because me and Catherine have hit a bit of a stale point in our relationship again. Okay. Um, Thank well, you and I appreciate you. We have lots of updates, but <laughs> what, what I'll do is, uh, so we've got some update emails, which we'll go into later, but just to reset the mood, we'll, we'll do a problem fresh. I think that's a really Ooh, good idea. I can't wait for the updates, but okay, let's do a fresh problem. Although I prefer, sorry, does it, sorry, Andrew, I respect you. Mm -hmm. Does it not good. make more sense? <laughs> To do the updates from the old problems and then do the new problems. Okay, yeah, no, I'm happy to go do the updates first. I if wouldn't you like. have felt the need to um, contradict you like that, Andrew, because I love and respect you more than Catherine does. Sorry. Don't be sorry. Be better. The, oh, okay. Sorry. I just, think, just you know what I mean. Like you clear the deck and then you clear the deck. Am I crazy? Like we get the updates and then we start the new. Am I? I I'm, I'm I'm refusing to join in with this because I feel like and you're what yelling at Andrew. To you? Pick a pick a parent, Em. Pick a parent. I, yeah, I, I'd say you're. Oh, let's all take Catherine's side. Right, fine, Andrew. 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 This is exactly what May was talking about. I know this <laughs> is exactly it. It's just constant bickering. <laughs> Come on, uh, let's anyway. hear it. Hello. Uh, um, listen, I hope you enjoyed that um, minute-long format deliberation. <laughs> um, okay. Which will be staying in, because it's important that people know that people like us should not work together. Okay. You have to see how the sausage is made. We need a man in here, a big straight man. <laughs> Make some choices and we'd be done by now. So. <laughs> I made a choice. No, but you, you just don't respect it because you don't want to fuck me. <laughs> you just touched my breath. I tried to. The dungarees are hiding them from me. Do you like I, Andrew, I'm sorry. I am actually ready and Catherine is distracting me. They are lovely dungarees, Catherine. Thank you. Ellen's mom made them. Oh, amazing. Shout out to Julie. May, that's really cool. Um, so, uh, our first Why update. are you looking at me like that? Andrew, sorry, I am listening. Catherine, for some reason, feels the need to speak over you. Okay, so with... And, no, no, the, the energy's too tense. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Compliment circle. Andrew's in it as well. Come on. 
Can Helen, I go first? Give one to Andrew than me, please. Andrew, I constantly live large when I get to tell people how old you are. Because the amount of times I'm at gigs and someone will go like, oh my God, you're good friends with Andrew. Andrew is so funny. He's so amazing. He's incredible. I'm like, I know, I know. Do you know he's also 12 years old? <laughs> and they all just freak out. And I'm just so proud to know you because I know that you're going to be a superstar. And it's just such a, a privilege to get to watch the beginning of this amazing career. Thank you. Helen. You're welcome. That's very sweet. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll do Andrew too now if okay. you like. There is no scenario in which this podcast would exist or work without you. True. I'm including him in that too, but I know that she doesn't want to be in the compliment circle because she's a bitch dick. <laughs> <laughs> because she's a bitch dick. And because she's blushing and she's not even receiving a direct compliment. She likes so bitch that, dick, nah, though. She does like bitch dick. What is the little bitch dick? Our little BD. Um, but no, truly, this would not, like, I don't, I can't stress to you enough at home, dear listeners, how much, like, we show up and scream at each other. And it is, listen, that's a talent yeah. in and of itself. Well, I put out this on the table and the yeah. candle and stuff. But truly, yeah. I. <laughs> genuinely have no idea how it goes from us talking to like, you know. Oh, online. I know. It's mad, yeah, like, isn't I don't it? Know yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So truly, you're profoundly talented and we're so grateful to you. Thank you so much. You oh, hold us all together. You. you keep the bus on the road. Andrew, us now. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, didn't mean, I didn't mean to say it with that tone. Yeah. Sorry. <gasps> um, Catherine's phone was on. That's all right. She's expecting an important call, Helen. That's allowed. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. A oh. call about delivery. Thank you, Andrew. You're very welcome. Uh, Catherine. You are amazing. You, your work ethic is second to none. Uh, I love sitting in a cafe and just bashing out admin with you. You're one of the few people on my uh, administrative wavelengths, which is <laughs> much appreciated. I agree. We really are admin soulmates. It was gorgeous. But once in Leeds, we just sat in a cafe for like four hours. And one of the... Um, the waiters was a trusted hogs listener and brought up free cake whilst we were just going through our spreadsheets. It was the most Catherine trusty hogs moment I think I've experienced. <laughs> that was such a nice cafe. What was that called was in Leeds? I will find out to plug. Oh my them. god, it was divine! And yeah, and Andrew and I just so happily moved through our to do list. Dreamy. It was it very was gorgeous. Dreamy. And he kept updating the parking on his phone. We didn't even have to go anywhere. Oh, it was the best day. Armadukes? <laughs> Question mark. Yes, I think it was. Wonderful film. Um, <laughs> and a cartoon. Mm. Huh. Um, Mama Duke's Leeds. Uh, Helen yes. Wilson voices a dog. It is. It was. Um, it wasn't Leeds. It was Sheffield's apology. Oh, um, Sheffield. and it was. It was Mama Duke's. Yeah, in Sheffield. Oh, Sheffield. You're good Sheffield. at admin. You'd reckon you'd remember the city. Whatever. And we had a lot of. We had a lot of work on. Mm, we were mm. distracted. Okay, so. Andrew, I'm ready. <laughs> Helen, you are one of the most loving people I know. You always make people feel very included no, in I every don't. situation no, I don't. you do Jim. you do my boyfriend who sometimes feels uncomfortable in green rooms just because he feels like oh i shouldn't be here or whatever well he shouldn't it's Ed, a professional workspace have... <laughs> touche touche <laughs> but despite your uh, your thoughts against him um, <laughs> you, you never let that show uh, you're always very welcoming and he, he says because <laughs> I'm loving so Catherine's good at admin and I'm just always nice I'll take it I'll take it thank you, thank you. Thank you okay Andrew. do you want to do one for each other no I think we have to crack on with the mail okay yeah, yeah. I think you're very pretty okay I think you're genuinely one of the funniest people like, I think they're, like no, the you've funniest had it before person. it's boring no, okay I and no, no, no oh my god can I say Ellen and I were talking about this the other day. She was like, she's genuinely the funniest person I've ever met. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. But no, it is true. She has not met Amy Gladhill. Amy Gladhill. <gasps> Amy Gladhill. She can't meet Amy yeah. Gladhill. Think how much Ellen would fancy Amy Gladhill. Size of those breasts. I the know. absolute state of that banter. That Hello. red hair. Hello. No, they're, yeah, they're you're never fun. meeting. I'm sorry. Shout out to Amy Gladhill, but you don't need to go near my woman. Let's go. <laughs> Andrew. Yes. Um, I appreciate you and I'm ready for that. And thank you for compliments, Aki. Thank you. That was a really lovely little diversion. I enjoyed it. Mm. Uh, so, <laughs> diversion. Uh, <laughs> well, we said we said for this episode we were just going to bash her a mailbag special. And so far, I think we've waffled on what, for like two minutes? hours. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew, okay. let's get to the point. So, uh, one update. Um, we, You were worried that there were no tall, old people in existence. <gasps> yes. I mean, yeah, there's no tall, but old people. I have received women. a couple of tweets, but nothing that's really fully settled my soul. A lot of like, my granny lived to 75 and she was 5 foot 10. And I'm like, 6'1". <laughs> okay, let's talk and about it. And be better than 75, I hope. <laughs> mm. um, well, these, these aren't much more reassuring, to be honest. Um, uh, I know a 70-year-old lady who's 5'10". 
uh, Carmen uh, Della Rafiche, who's a model, she's in her 90s. She's 5'11". Okay, Whoa. good. That's getting to way getting better. Somewhere. And then this comment from Abby on our YouTube says, Helen, I'm a social worker with older adults in hospitals. Right. The tall ones do exist, I promise. Whoa. <laughs> maybe, but why are we in hospital? <laughs> maybe only meet one every couple of months, but they're out there. <laughs> Nice. So every couple of months, nice, a really Abby. tall old person is going nice. into hospital, and that's supposed to be a comfort. <laughs> You're really old, though. Like, old enough to, like, need care. Yeah, okay. So I, I don't have to, like, start making my will. No. And, oh, my God, you know how you want to live with me when you're older? Yeah. As in, like, because you won't get a pension? Yes. Hi. No, I have a pension. Okay. Uh-huh. Just going to spaff it before then. Yeah, no, I do, I do know. Do you imagine, like, I get, like, a death sentence when I'm, like, 78, and I'm like, right, Tokyo, Disney, by sea, let's fucking do it. <laughs> okay. So before you interrupted me and I was saying that um, Ellen thinks you're so funny, Mm -hmm. she said this. I wish you lived with her. I said, what? I said, shit, I wish you lived with her. I said, why? Because then I get to see her more. Oh. Said, we should never live together. We would never live together. We could live together. I said, Helen doesn't need to be observed by me every day. What's you up to today, Helen? Fuck off. You would chuck me out within like five Janet, hours. Janet, <laughs> There's no Janet, way. There's no way we could share a communal bathroom. Also, who has a plate every time you make toast? Do you know what I mean? You can just do it on the side. It is not the end of the world. And for some reason, Catherine brought out a plate for me the other day for one potato waffle. Who are we showing off to? The Queen of Sheba? Where's Sheba? You know, where is it? <laughs> Bit droll. <laughs> and, <laughs> and also, if we had neighbours, I would be consistently worried about the pitch. Oh, yes. Uh, Sunilas as well. Mm. Poor Barb. Oh, Barb. <laughs> I do Barb. love her, though. Um, well, the potato waffles is a great segue into another update. I am so good at segues. Uh, as you as you remember, um, uh, Ashling B did her alive dubstep potato waffles. Yes, yeah. on one of our more episodes. Irish episodes. Yeah. Oh, one, yes. <laughs> Uh, and uh, this uh, from Joe. He's made an actual dubstep what? waffle uh, waffle song. I'll play it for you Joe! into oh the God. studio, and I'll um, um, insert it into the yes, here. yes, please. Here we go. This chicken. Chicken. <laughs> I feel like I'm tripping. You are. <laughs> okay, this is one of the coolest this things I've ever heard. Are you kidding? Do you not think with a remix of Dolly Parton 9 to 5 back and track it would literally make this? Because it sounds like a 14 in 1, despite the fact it is one song. This is unbelievable. Can I send this to Ashley B? Oh, please do, yes. I'll get it sent on WhatsApp to you. <laughs> Congratulations, Thank you, Joe. Thank you. That was Some would say that might have been a waste of a day for you, but not me. I think that was fucking flawless. <laughs> Are you kidding? Ashley's going to lose her mind. That's so cool. Amazing. How do people even do that? People put so much time into making cool stuff for us. It's really it's nice. It's so amazing. We, so we met Trusty Hogs memes the other day. Oh my God, at the live. Okay, so Patreon supporters will be able to listen to the live episode that we did with Rona C. Titley. It was phenomenal. Ashling B's best friend, as we, it's funny that. Mm-hmm. And um, at it, Trusty Hogs memes was in the room. If you don't follow Trusty Hogs memes, you're missing out. Go on Instagram, it's follow Trusty Hogs, follow Catherine Bohart, follow Andrew White, follow Helen Bauer, follow Trusty Hogs memes. It's all you've got to do. Don't follow him. She does not want that. Oh, please do not. Leave her please. alone. Leave her alone. But Trusty Hogs memes is so funny. So good. And basically, we were like backstage at Trusty girl. Hogs Live. I it. And um, I was like on my Instagram and I was like girl. flicking through my stories bisexual, and it was like thank you, Andrew. Trusty Hogs memes just came up and it was like um, outside of the venue. And I was like, they're here. And then we were both like peering around the curtain trying to figure out who it was. I was so happy it was a bisexual girl in a relationship with a man. You were thrilled. You were thrilled. You could she was have... incredible. She's so funny. Amazing. She's so funny. Amazing. The memes are genuinely like quite, I mean, cruel, cruel about me, I'd say, but genuinely so good on. to little Helen. So funny. So good to little Helen. So funny. <laughs> oh, God. That live show was great. If you haven't listened, I think it's worth joining the Patreon for because I sang. Yes. Yeah, you did a full rendition of a I did duet. Defying Gravity Hello. as a solo. With um, with lighting changes. With lighting and changes. And smoke smoke it was so great. 
to be fair, they really like at the karaoke hall. They really gave you the right. And environment. I was on like a two day hangover. I did a tequila shot that one of our lovely listeners, Chloe, Chloe gives me got to all stop of it. Oh <laughs> so good. And um, I sang really good. When does that go up for the patrons? Uh, they'll be out now. Yeah. Okay. Well, listening. I'll be prepared. Yeah, <laughs> I would. Oh my god. We got. We're, yeah, we're treated so well. But yeah, follow Trusty Hug memes. Go on, Andrew. Sorry. Uh, uh, would you like another update? Yeah. Fantastic. Well, this is a very positive one. Um, we had a listener who emailed in. They were powerlifting. Uh, yes. She'd started powerlifting. She was traveling from Essex into London to do a lot of powerlifting. Right. Yes. And um, the, she was wondering whether, because a lot of people in her life were questioning whether it was worth that amount of dedication. Yeah, which was jealous and insane. Yeah. yeah. And you told them to keep going for it. And we have this update from Elle. I'm the powerlifter who asked for advice a while back. I just wanted to say, I qualified for British Bench Championships and came second. Oh, oh my God, that's huge. Massive, oh that's so God. cool. It's amazing, isn't it? What? So how many benches? British Bench, I don't know. I'll, I'll Google British Bench Championships Definitely to do. get some more context that for this. That is so freaking cool. Because at school, it's two kids to one bench. So when you think about it, what they can do with one person, <laughs> okay. just being droll. <laughs> oh, is it L? Is that their name? L. Uh, uh, yes, that's the initial. Well done. Congratulations. Congratulations. So oh, cool! Your work, hard work paid off. Do you imagine that, like now, Elder spends all their time just wandering around, hoping there's a car crash that she needs to lift off someone? Do you know what I mean? I don't. I'm not hoping, but like, I if it don't was, think so. Because you'd want to showcase it I IRL. I wish that, and not wish that, like a man couldn't lift his case up onto the high bit of the like. I offered to help a man the other day with his case, and he said. <gasps> no, no, thank you. But he was so shocked. And then he just suddenly realised how shocked he was. And he was like, no, but thank you so much, sweetie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fine, no worries. <laughs> it's like he'd never been asked before. Oh, and he freaked out. That's so sweet. Like, what's this big girl doing? And I was like, do you want to help with your case? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, no, 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 no. no. Oh, thank you so much, sweetie, yeah, for the offer, though. <laughs> so much for emasculating me like that, okay? And Have you know when you're like, I know this is full of drag stuff. Like, I could just tell. Oh, really? I could so tell. Out. Yeah, yeah. So the funny. moment he starts speaking, I was like, "Here we go." That's so funny. Elle, congratulations. We're proud of you. That's so um, come here and lift us up. I guess is what I want to say to that. That's the next well, I logical step. Would love step. to see one of our listeners bench press both, both of you. That would be cool. That would be incredible. I think I'd be too aroused <laughs> for being bench pressed. By being bench pressed by a woman. Yeah. Okay. In all fairness. I'm, yeah. Are all you, I'm saying is chalk up your hands because you it'll be slippery. <laughs> you know our friends of the podcast Shelf. Yes. They both are weirdly, and I mean weirdly ripped. Like they're so compact and like they're cutesy, compact, and yeah. they're like a, l a little small, little cute little double act, and then they take off their jumpers, and I find it hard to focus on the conversation. <laughs> I tend to have to be like, like honest to God, with Rachel or Ruby, I'm like, you're gonna have to put those away if we're gonna talk. Is it like guns? It's, Is it like a gun show it's thing? It's crazy. Stop it. It's crazy. I'm gigging with them. Oh my God, I have like, to show you their arms. Next week or this week. I ask them to flex. I fucking will. It's actually, but you're going to be, you're going to be turned on. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Yeah, so listen, I don't, I mean, would I love to be bench pressed by a woman? Yes, but do I think that that should be like a public event? I'm not sure. Oh my God. I oh know, patrons only. Yes. Film it for the Patreon. <laughs> okay, but should I pay them? How does it work? <laughs> um, we'll do uh, one more update. Uh, oh, no, two more updates we've got. And then we'll, we'll do a, a new problem. Bloody love updates. Uh, this is a prob uh, update on the mum trauma dumping problem. Yes! <laughs> um, so <laughs> Screaming. Uh, this is uh, the E who wrote in and uh, her mum was trauma dumping a lot of stuff, coming into her room and just telling her yes. you know, upsetting stuff. Oh, my God, of course, yes. Mm -hmm. About the parents' relationships, I imagine. Yeah, a lot about relationships. And, um, uh, yeah, and, like, I think specifically it was kind of overstepping a boundary because it was uh, about the relationship as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he says, I have an update on the mum trauma dumping. Give it uh, to us. I suggested that she spoke to someone professional, i.e. doctor, counsellor, etc. No. And yesterday when she came to apologise, uh, she came to apologise for projecting onto me and uh, frankly uh, for, for being quite a bitch. As she, she said, that's what, those were her words. Whoa. So good. Um, I know I, she didn't say bitch dick, unfortunately. Oh, that's a shame. Well, maybe <laughs> yeah. in the future. We'll, we'll okay. get it going. We'll yeah. get it going. Uh, she has been speaking to one now, uh, but she doesn't believe that talking about it will help. 
Yeah. She told me this yesterday and I'm still very frustrated. Uh, I've been in therapy for five years and it has helped me immensely. But her saying that makes me think she just doesn't believe in therapy. She has slowed down on the drama thumping though. Um, and I've since started ignoring her uh, when she does it. So thanks for the advice. Okay, number one amazing. I will say this for your mum. No, me first, Kathwe, me first. Um, I, when I started therapy, I was doing it to appease people around me. Because I was like, everyone's saying I need to go. So I was like, I'll just go. And I genuinely did not think it would help. I was like, this is how it is. Like talking about it's not making a difference and then it did so like allow people to be stuck in a mindset that will change because i was definitely that person now i fucking love therapy like i get upset when my therapist takes a holiday i'm like no yeah and also like you know i think we were all quite like understandably like firm in relation to your mother last time but also like she's a person she has flaws it sounds like she's moving in the right direction it sounds like she came and owned her shit it sounds like she came and apologized and well the first step to bettering yourself is talking about how you're a bitch to people but her her saying that she's not sure it'll help her i don't think is saying that it doesn't help you you know mm -hmm. it doesn't i i think um you know I, I that sounds like massive progress and i think that's great we actually helped yeah <laughs> Woohoo! i guess we're sort of like saving lives I said that to someone the other day that on the podcast we give out advice and it's like we're making we're being the change in the world that we want to see. Yes, we are. They did not see it that way. Wow. <laughs> Is that your fucking mom? No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started. Get bitch, oh, on, no. started. <laughs> we, we have another parental problem update. Yes. Um, right. This is uh, from the t had the headline of this problem was Is my dad having an affair? The one we did with Ashling. Yes, this is. Um, Wait, speaking remind of, me, remind me. Uh, this is a good problem. If you haven't listened, go back to the Ashling B, B episode. Remember, she was like, he's been seeing the woman next door loads or on the street and they've been text texting. on his phone. Yeah. Yes! Oh my God. Yes, yes, yes. Um, oh my God, they're having a baby together. And the mom was like, is he? I think he is. I suspect he's done he it is. before, she he's said. Done it before. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, so, Jay says, I did confront my dad about the text on his phone. Thank you so much for the advice. It oh was God. super awkward, but I do think it's cleared the air between us. He, of course, denied anything was going on and insisted that I had nothing to worry about. Brackets, I suspected he would do this. But my mum has told me that they're actually seeking couples therapy. So that is positive, I guess. And then I can't remember the context of this line, but I'll say it anyway. Helen... I will not pack any cotton if I ever decide to visit the Arctic tundra. Cotton tundra. kills. Oh, because the cotton gets cotton wet and you kills. die. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and thank you, because that's a really important lesson that I really hope all the hogs did take on board. Because <laughs> it's survival skills as well as a fun podcast, and I think it's important that we remember that. Cotton kills, lest we forget. Um, <laughs> it's important that people know. <laughs> <laughs> You're so fucking weird. Uh, <laughs> no, no. You're so weird. I can't believe. Why can, are you so weird? Could you, you can't be the weirdest shit all the time? Uh. It's survival. <laughs> can you like? Did everyone else feel our reaction just listening to this? Of Andrew saying that someone had confronted their dad, and we were both like, "Oh my god, real life consequences <laughs> to us doing banter. Real life consequences. <laughs> oh my god." You're so right. The two of us literally went, "Great, how did that go?" <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. But can we talk about how us two, the least confrontational, most like, honestly, like we're so avoidant. Um, <laughs> and then the fact that most people have come back and said it, our relationship with our parents was bettered because we talked about the thing that was difficult. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad to hear that our advice that we would never take worked for y'all. Oh that's my right. god! I'm 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 really happy that your parents are seeking counselling if that's what they both um, desire. If that's what your mum desires, I should say. And also, that's like, so good cool. for you for like saying something. Like, just because a conversation's awkward doesn't mean it's not important to have. And also that like you can have difficult conversations lovingly. Okay. It sounds like in both contexts, like you yes. they did that and that's so impressive. That's so true. I feel like we've maybe spoken about this before, but like there's ways of like talking to someone about something that's tricky and going into it without anger, without judgment and going in with like love and patience to be like, I'm aware that I'm bringing this subject to you. I'm prepared for this chat. You haven't prepared for it. Yeah. We're both going to be a bit awkward, but let's just allow it to like, I'm not trying to, you know when someone is trying to catch someone out? Yes. Like you don't have to be catching someone out. Yeah. Like it can just be a chat. Yeah. 
Yeah. Unless it's me and my mum, in which case it's fucking battle royale and let's fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> and like read into everything each other says. That's so healthy. And then bring it back up five years later. <laughs> I knew you never loved me. And so therapy's going well, is it? Yeah, shout out to Anne, don't okay. worry. Soon soon we'll do a battle royale for springtime. Soon it cometh. <laughs> soon it cometh, Anne. Wow. Soon. Terrifying. Um, no, but okay. everyone else and their mums too, right? Hello. Um, <laughs> Okay, very droll. Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, our next update is actually, we, we talked about some Love people. Update. Me too. Uh, some people fall asleep to us or like use us to help get to sleep. And, yes. Um, I've seen, like that's incredible. I still get messages every now and again, people who just started listening to the podcast when we spoke about it like ages ago. And they're like, just, you know, it does help me unwind. <laughs> really? Wake up! No, it's just so fun. <laughs> No, but that's crazy because like fire, fire. <laughs> <laughs> but doesn't it make you think about all the things that you have to fix in your life, like your pension and your relationship with your mom? Pension, very easy. Pension be done. Good. Morning. We're not sponsored by pension. Be. We should um, be. Yeah, we should. Uh, also, should we rather than like yelling to try and get them to wake up, shouldn't oh. we just like whisper subliminal, like increase your Patreon subscription, oh, yeah. subscribe to the pe- book book tickets to come see us live, subscribe, like, and review five stars. Leave a comment on our YouTube channel. Make sure it's nice about Catherine, but kind of incendiary about Ellen. Just be nice to both of us is the right thing to do. Do you think about Buy gifts and send them. Send them to Andrew that sends them to me. But also send some from me. You get so many fucking gifts. I like Kinder you Buenos. Get you get all the gifts. <laughs> I get so many I gifts. Get also if anyone listening works for disney <laughs> i am still looking access to the special secret lounge of club 36 you're not really whispering anymore you got to <laughs> 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 you went more ghosty at the end rather than subliminal Ooh, it went from like <laughs> we're watching you work <laughs> Oh, hell! That's always my fear with ghosts. It's like, oh, the things you've seen. That's you know what I mean? Worry? You can put the sticker over the camera on your laptop, but you can't put blindfolds on a bloody ghost. <laughs> Am I right? You can't put blindfolds Very on a ghost. Very <laughs> You think somebody's moved through the dimensions to come back to this planet? If I was coming back, as a, you'd watch. And, got, and wants to see you. Let's be clear. A ghost does not just get like one day to come and have a look. If you're hanging around for like a thousand years, you're going to watch some wanking. And you think it would be you? I think I'm interesting. I think I'm an interesting case study. To be fair, you are interesting. <laughs> I, you, because I, of the imagi wanking. I can't pretend I'm not curious, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. The screaming, the costume, the turtles. I like, there's a lot going on. And the- oh, yeah, sorry. I, I, did, I didn't actually get to the end of the update. We went on a bit of a, um, a diversion to use that. I word don't again. believe so. Um, <laughs> so, um, as well as uh, as adult people using uh, our voices to go to sleep, uh, this person oh, has no, written in. I just did so much wank content. Please don't say there's a child listening. It might be a dog. It's, no, it's a baby. It's, is that better? I think that's better. I don't think they can take oh, it in. I don't know if that's right. <laughs> I don't know if I think that's right. Um, we use YouTube videos of talking as background to help my baby self settle and stay asleep yours works really well i don't know i don't know about hello that. baby it's Hi, helen baby. it's your auntie helen and auntie Catherine here don't listen to any there's no such thing as ghosts her elf so violent. That's the thing you're worried about. <laughs> you might scare them with ghosts. Hat sie ganz fest. Keine Angst. Ich will dich schütteln, wer nicht beschützen. German's the most soothing language you could go with. It's Phil Collins in German, though, in all fairness. So it is very <laughs> soothing. We couldn't retell from the, um, the okay. cuteness of the words. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Hi, Hi, baby. baby. <laughs> is this creepy? Uh, <laughs> Babies, you're going cheese. to poo yourself, but it's okay. You're allowed to. <laughs> oh, I bet you smell all of milk. All of milk and all of poo. Mm. Oh, <laughs> oh what a silly baby! <laughs> Hi, oh, baby. Gosh. Um, please stop letting your babies listen to it. As soon as they get to the age of one, and bang on. Yeah. Any sort of language comprehension, get them out of I here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. have to agree. Wait, language really comprehension would. surely is earlier than one. Um, mm. it, in terms of. Uh, you can you can start to kind of process language, but not in this sort of complex way. Oh, so it'll complex! Be, it'll be okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this level, this level of complexity. Could you imagine a baby's first words is just very droll? 
<laughs> that would be amazing. Oh, no, Helen. <laughs> I'm only four months. <laughs> oh, my God. That would kill me if baby's first phrase was, I'm only four months. <laughs> Somebody did ask us if we would do a baby grow that said, I'm only four. Oh, uh, my God. That's the Jespians. That's such a cute idea. Yeah. I, think I mean, we will definitely for you. Yeah. For me? No, for the Jespian. Oh, sorry. I thought, I, thought, I thought you were trying to put me I just don't know how grow. much of a market there would be for baby grows to say I'm only four for a baby. Like, it's a bit niche. Yeah, maybe, maybe we should go for <laughs> Catherine's I'm only four months. But again, that's only got a one month. Oh, could I get an adult baby grow that says I'm only four? I don't now think we should work. allow that. <laughs> oh, God. I hate you. Okay. I hate you. Let's Put go to a problem, shall we? We're having fun. Put that in. <laughs> You're disgusting. <laughs> so, uh, this? is it new problems now? We're going to go to new problems. Yeah. Uh, thank you for all your updates. Thank you for your if gorgeous you updates. have any updates from previous problems, trustyhogs at gmail.com. If you have new problems, please send them in. Thank uh, you. We know there's quite a backlog of stuff, so apologies if you're like, oh, where's my problem? It might even be that it's a Christmas problem problem and I'm waiting for next Christmas. We, Lads, we, read, we just we read got this all. Christmas card and it's April. Do you exactly. know what I mean? We read also, them all. Also, remember so that there's like three mailbag specials just for the Patreons, mm -hmm. which oh, we just like bash there. through loads of problems. So like, I'm hoping... We that can. yours isn't hidden on there, but if it is, we have gossiped about you. I'm Sorry, apology. you might want to join the Patreon. I don't know. And it's five pounds a month. Anyway, Andy. Uh, so, to start afresh with a brand new problem, this is entitled Coming Out. <gasps> Uh, hello, uh, this is from A. Hi A. Hi A. Okay, so I split this into two um, uh, to just give you some background. I, 16F, uh, have known that I'm a lesbian for a while now. Love it. But though through no fault of their own, I can't seem to tell my family. Mm. With my friends, it's different, and they always seem surprised when I say I'm not out at home. My parents' and sister are the very antithesis of homophobes, but when I try to tell them, the words catch in my throat. Mm. Wait. Okay, and uh, they're not homophobes. No, no, it did take me a second to work that out. Yeah, oh, sure, I understood the it first time. Would be gay. <laughs> it, does, it does sound like you're saying your family are gay there. They're gay as hell. Yeah. Um, so advice for that would be useful. Um, uh, Maybe they're those people who like seem like they're ready to go for peace, like you know those mothers who are like dying for a cause. My mother. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. Go on. Uh, I know I don't have to, and that my whole life is ahead of me to do that. And also, coming out before I get a girlfriend means that I forgo the coolest option, which is just to bring her to family Christmas. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, but also, I want to be able to tell my sister about the girl I like. I want my mum to stop implying I'm into my guy friends, and my dad to stop freaking the fuck out uh, when I hang out with them alone. Uh, with guy friends, I assume. Um, mm -hmm. uh, even though it was very funny when I was watching the diving with him and was talking about Tom Daly. Uh, brackets, but not British, and how cool it is he's able to be in a same-sex relationship and also be an elite athlete. My dad's response was, does that mean you're into effeminate guys? <laughs> <laughs> Sweet dad. Sweet Aww. dad. Sweet dad. <laughs> We anyway, uh, that's the crux of it all. Thank you for all your work in the podcast. I love you guys so much. And if you ever decide to do the Melbourne uh, Comedy Festival again, um, uh, you will sell, at the very least, two tickets. Brackets, me and my future girlfriend. Two oh, tickets, yes! My future girlfriend! I love Number one, we will so both much. come out to Melbourne at some point. Yeah. We will. We're going to do it. We're going to so. do it. I mean, Catherine's yeah. already done it, but I'll, I'll, I'll get invited. I'll be back. I'll get invited one year. Don't you worry. I'm going to come back. Um, Okay, so first of all, congrats. That sounds awesome. How nice to be a lesbian. Second of all, congrats that you have cool friends who are accepting of it. Yes. I do get it, right? I do, like, even when you don't have parents who are, like, like overtly ho um, homophobic, I think what you have described there is that there's a very clear expectation in your house that has been predetermined, which is odd, right? Like, it's always odd that we decide what our sexual, what the the sexuality of our children is going to be mm. before they tell us that. Um, it's normal. It and you must, you must guess. It's fun for everyone. Yeah, but there, it does sound like there's a prescribed expectation. And even though like what you're saying to them isn't bad, it does feel odd to go like, hey, everybody, I need to change the narrative you have about me. And so I totally get that nervousness. And, and that's fine. But I actually think you have a really cool opportunity because whilst I understand the drama yeah. of the Christmas reveal, yeah. I, oh, listen. I get it. I actually think it's quite a lot cooler to come out to your parents when you... I mean, I came out when I had my first girlfriend. But in so doing, I sort of, like, burdened her with having to be, like, their first... The first lesbian they met. The first, like... They were like, maybe it's just her. Like, maybe it's... You know, whereas I think, like, going, like, I'm gay. And it's not for anybody else. It's not to do with anybody else. It's not because of anybody else. I like that, yeah. I'm gay. 
and I'll be gay if I'm single and I'll be gay if I'm not. It's quite a cool thing to be like this. She hasn't been like, also parents are like, can sometimes be like, is it a phase? Is, are they being influenced? Blah, 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 blah. Like, it's quite nice to be like. Influenced by what? As in like, is it just this one person that they've met who makes them feel this way? Like, right, 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 right. right. You yeah, know, yeah. I, I'm not saying that your parents will do any of those things, but it is quite a freeing position to go like, of my own volition and based on my mm. own self, I know this to be true. That's so cool. I've got something to add. Yeah. Um, with no personal experience. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, we know. <laughs> but I think it's important to say. Um, my friend took a little bit of time to come out, and they left it so long that their sister came out before them, <gasps> and he was livid because he wanted to be the first one. And I'm just saying, like, I'm not an expert. I don't have any scientific facts to back it up, but I've noticed that gay does run in families, a hundred percent. It does. It does. And like, you do not want to get pipped to your post by your sister coming to you and being like, "So I really fancy this girl," and then you're like, "No, I fancy this girl," and then it's like, "Here we fucking go." Drama. Yeah, that's I'd true. say like be quick because you never know who's gonna come out and you do not want them to steal your thunder. That's so interesting. Thank you so much for listening. So interesting. Was that actually interesting? No, that was great advice. Because yeah. could you imagine like building yourself up to come out and your sister does it like the day before you? How happens if your sister brings back the girl you fancy? Oh my, oh, god. my god. We're not writing a sitcom. We're not writing a sitcom. We're not writing a sitcom. Okay, but a... what a uh, what a pilot. I know. No, right, you like... know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that'd be great I okay oh my god no Andrew write it down <laughs> yeah okay look Bye. Do trademarked <laughs> Tra- like, that's not how it works oh yeah but it's close enough but in terms of doing it maybe start with your sister it sounds like she's like the easier option like maybe start there and then maybe she can be there when you tell your parents yeah but you might come out to your sister and then she'll quickly rush to your parents and tell you oh don't tell the parents oh you don't want to give her a head start I wouldn't give her a oh, head we're making start it a right I'm sorry now. for everything I know about the sister which I'm going to say is quite a lot she gay as fuck. Wow. Okay. Really? She's in a race. Fascinating. <laughs> but I do think Catherine's advice was also interesting and made a really good point. I think, did we solve that? I think that's solved. Yeah, I think. So tell them really quickly before anyone else gets a chance to steal your thunder <laughs> and then be down, d- done with the consequences. But also, like, if you're looking for advice on how to tell them, I think the smaller you make it, like, the better. I think, like, the more you can just be like, the next time somebody says, like, who do you fancy that boy? Just be like, oh no, I'm actually into girls. As it's not like, you know, I don't. That's th- nice. Rather than, I, w- I almost wish that I hadn't made mine such a like, family to the drawing room, you know? Because <laughs> then they were like, we need to have a reaction to this, as opposed to just like, oh yeah. Mm. You know, if you deliver it like it's not like something they get to have like a massive opinion on, then I think they will accept that as. A thing that's true of you that isn't something that's they're expected to have a fucking opinion. And what's the other classic stuff that people say, like allow people reaction time? Yeah, I do think that's true. I do think, bear in mind, that's actually a very good point. You, it's that thing you said earlier, which is like, you've known this for ages. You've been preparing for this. They haven't. It might be a nice time to be like, you might need some time to process that, but maybe I'm not the best person to process it with. Mm-hmm. We can talk about it in a few days if you like. Yeah. But now you know. Yeah. And let them get the like <laughs> crazy shit that sometimes people say when they panic out with somebody else. Yeah. Because yeah. I think that's good. Because that stuff stays with you. You don't it need does. to carry that round. Don't need to hear it. Mm. They cover this in Modern Family. Wonderful sitcom. It is it's a very a good sitcom, yeah. It's a wonderful Why, sitcom. Who comes out in that? They do like uh, Mitch is talking about coming out mm. to his dad and then just sort of like that stuff. Mm. Yeah. But they do it like as a like. In the past, it happened. Oh, yeah, because the stuff that your parents say in the first panic. The yeah. First panic, you really shouldn't have to hear, but we all, many of us have, but you shouldn't have And also, to. there's no cause to panic when you hear it, but people mm-hmm. are from different generations and don't see things coming sometimes, which yeah. is something that I think in many ways will be dying out with a generation, and hopefully our generation will do better. Hard to agree. Thank you so much for listening to Trusty Heart. Thank you so much. We just wanted to jump in really quickly and give our patron a little plug. Because it is thriving over there. Yeah, thanks so much to everyone who's joined. And if you want to join us, there's no pressure. Please enjoy the podcast otherwise. But if you do want to join us, there's so many benefits. You get an early access to the ep- episode. Mm-hmm. You get an extra episode a week. And you also get early access to our live shows. Now, the last one sold out in under 24 hours. So you <sighs> want to be a patron if you want to come to the one on June 4th, mm-hmm. uh, which will be on sale very soon. Please join. Please sign up. Please get a ticket. And hey, thanks to everyone who has already. And just a reminder, if you sign up now, there are over 70 extra episodes that you can access immediately. How many? 
over 70, oh Catherine. Oh, my God. It's unbelievable. But for now, please continue enjoying Trusty Hog. Bye. Uh, well, our next problem is... Uh, well, I see what you think of this. This is from M. Hi, M. Hi, oh, M. my God, M. M. No, no. Not, not M. Not you do that every time. Not bitch dick, M. M. For <laughs> anyone who missed that, M just went, not me. Like, we've heard not it before. Me. It wasn't the funny shit. the first time. Very droll. If anything is... Very droll, <laughs> Helen. Very droll. <laughs> <laughs> um, I need to stop saying dr- that's going to become like a catchphrase, isn't it? <laughs> like... It does feel like it. <laughs> Very droll. Okay, let's go. <laughs> so, see, so yeah, see, we think of this. This says, "Where I work, uh, have started a reward scheme for those who aren't." Sorry, Andrew, that's not your fault. Helen tried to whisper something to me. You were reading. It was honestly, it's like some of us, you know, I feel like I'm back in school where I'm like, some of us are trying to learn. Can you please not talk to me when the teacher's speaking? When we're having moments of this, I want us to remember how good I've been on um, WhatsApp recently, and I'm also a professional. Doesn't mean that you're not being. Okay, sorry, Catherine. I'm an Andrew. Put your tits away. Come on, let's hear it, Andrew. Okay, so <laughs> fingers on lips, Helen. Thank you. Yeah. Where I work have started a reward scheme for those who aren't off sick between now and the beginning of next year. Fuck off. The pot is £2,500 split between 42 people. Fuck off. But if someone is sick, it goes to one less and your share goes up. Stop. That's fucked up, right? Yeah, that's evil. Question mark. That That's the question. That's fucked up, right? I am Yeah, furious. that's fucked up. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. What the literal fuck? Did, okay, hi, Em. I'm going to try to stay calm. Is that the end of it? Yeah, that is it. Yeah, just any thoughts Oh, no. Uh, M, hello. I'm going to try to stay calm while I explain my feelings about this, but they are mainly hot fury. That is horrendous. First of all, that is disgraceful and coercive and truly manipulative. Incredibly discriminatory. And A, I hope you have a union. If you don't, you should speak to them. I hope you have a HR person. And if you do, you should speak to them. It is incredibly unkind it's sexist as shit sorry women get periods men yeah. don't a lot of the time like sorry, that's often it's fuck off and fuck you that is so rude so to essentially incentivize well, so it's, I just say it's dangerous as well me like, too people not going to the doctor people like not taking mental health days when they need them going like, to work when so... they shouldn't making other people sick because like people often take sick days so is that to prohibit like themselves yeah, from making yeah. other people ill it is just because so you've got a bad. good immune system and you can fight a cold doesn't mean that someone you work with can like yeah. just because it's for you it's just a cold for other people it's not just a cold also like, you have no idea if somebody is like is in the early stages of pregnancy mm-hmm. is on their period has a mental health issue is a human no we're not, I don't even know why I'm doing like like odd situations like, yeah. or situations that are like um, intense it's like a human being sometimes gets you want to go to Thought Park in the middle of the week no, and you don't want to no. take a day off and I fucking get it but the people who work for you are not machines they're people they get sick okay let's do it's practical stuff do we have any idea what industry this is um, I don't know what industry is. it definitely seems like an office type job from office some job. some uh, previous okay so n- number one like HR with one person is tricky but the numbers is a really important thing so try and go with a group as far as unionising yeah. goes like you often need to do it through one of the bigger companies that's already set up up mm-hmm. um so you can contact to find out who your local union rep is mm-hmm. um once again it is annoyingly a numbers game but, but if think... your office is linked to any other offices if you feel uncomfortable doing it in-house you can like contact other offices and unionize that way like my brother knows quite a lot about this and i know a little bit through him so if you are willing to tell us what company it's for i'd be more than happy to like respond personally and al- oh great and also put anything in writing with hr as well like afterwards send an email that says like what was said and what you like what you what the takeaways were because you know it's good to have a track record of these things truly that is absolutely disgraceful honestly i just take the next month off sick and just like get rid of that bonus <laughs> so it doesn't no one else has to live with that stress I, or pressure yeah no, no no because you're just you just count yourself out of the pot it's if you take a day off yeah. you're out of the pot oh. can I just say by the way oh right truly there's an episode on maintenance phase that just Ooh. for like your peace of mind of like this isn't so they do an episode about um sp- about incentivizing weight loss in the workplace and they talk a lot about how fucking inappropriate it is for your employer to be involved in your health and dictating how it should behave in a way that is like quite relevant to this I think and is a good listen if you're like furious about this and I'm fucking furious about this but truly I can't stress enough how appalling that is and it's like what they will say to you is 
well, we're not saying you can't day, take a day off sick for work. We're just incentivizing people not to. We're just rewarding those who don't. But what you are also saying is, is like, the healthy people are more valuable to this company than the people who are and human they are, or but you can't say it out loud. Human or occasionally <laughs> ill or have like a disability. But also, like, then what it means is you create this pernicious context where people are policing each other's health. Yeah. In a way that's so grotesque. Mm. Like, it's so gross to be like, like either what it puts people are putting pressure on the people who are sick to take a day off because they want a higher part of the pot or people are <laughs> judgmental. not even think about that that one person who really wants a nice holiday this year going around the office being like you should go home yeah that looks like, like leprosy <laughs> yeah or it's like snitching where you're like i didn't like people being like i wouldn't have been off sick if it wasn't for this person bringing it in it's just like create such a toxic work mm -hmm. space or also like it, policing other people's behaviors whether or not they lead to like positive health outcomes fuck do you imagine this isn't an office and this is actually like build a bear and build a bear and it's like <laughs> nationwide <laughs> and that means all the workers oh. of build a bear we walk around with build -a -bear broken bones a, a workforce a single build a bear has a workforce of 42 staff <laughs> You never know, Andrew. You're <laughs> so wrong. Mm, like it's horrible. People are human and should be able to be human. And the fear of like, also like, it's not just it's not just that like it's abhorrent and diminishes our understanding of people as humans and our uh, fucking empathy. Like you don't want other people to be thrilled you're sick, right? Like it's such a gross energy to engender. Can we just address the elephant in the room though? The fact that like we're both sort of like so outraged at this, but we both do a career where if we're sick, we just don't get paid. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's an absolute. But like, it's a boring, like, the way that the rest of us were. Like, so comedians, like, and a lot of things in the arts, like, if we can't do a gig, we don't get paid for the gig. Um, so there's an encouragement to work through sickness, yeah. to go and do shows, even though the chance of spreading it is so high because you're sharing a physical microphone. Like, even if it's anti in between, like, we're breathing into the exact same thing. And I think but if you have to take a day off, then you just don't get paid. I think that part is probably what is touching a nerve here. The other thing that's touching a nerve is that there's a like sort of a public shame in it as well, which is like you're publicly advertised as being there. Yeah. When you don't show up for work, everyone uh -huh. is told that you aren't showing up for work. And often they don't explain to customers or your coworkers that you're sick. It's just like, oh, she flaked. And it's like very similar here yeah. where it's like a public announcement because now everyone knows they have a bigger pot. Yeah. The person being sick. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be like an announcement of weakness because the strong the people are being games. rewarded. It's, it's yeah. fucking mm. gross. And then you have to go, right? So then everyone knows you're off sick. You, you then have to like explain. In a sense, you have to explain yourself to your... Because why would you miss out on the money? Suddenly people feel more entitled to ask you what was wrong with you. The thing is, if we don't do a business. job, then sometimes our agents lose money as well. Our agents' assistant lose money. Like, I know. The trickle-down effect, the guilt is huge. The pressure is huge. And let me tell you, like most people do their jobs because they want to do their jobs. They want to be good at their job. They want to do their best. They don't want to let their team down. Yeah. The added pressure. By the way, if you have any sort of mental illness, any pressure. like Not me. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> but for example, a big issue with me saying I'm sick for work is that like, if it's it's my brain. My brain's already telling me I'm an utter piece of shit. Mm -hmm. To then be told, like, that everyone's going to be asking me tomorrow what was up. It's just like, just fucking, it's just so gross. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got something so more to gross. say on this. Can we do it in the extras, though? Yeah. yeah. Can I say so one last thing? Private. Yeah. It's also like, obviously, there's a privilege thing here, right? So, like, people without disabilities, able bodied people are like, or yeah. it's like ableist inherently, right? Are obviously going to find this easier to do because their illnesses might affect them mm -hmm. less intensely. Mm -hmm. But also, like, People who don't have, say, children are going to find mm -hmm. this easier because they don't have people coming from nurseries into their mm -hmm. home with illnesses. Like, people who have... Chronic nets. Or like <laughs> I was going to say... Itchy vaginas, you know? You can't get that itch out of work sometimes. You just need to be at home. I was going to say people with partners have a privilege here, right? They have ultimately, like, somebody to take care of them but there's greater pressure like you know you don't have that if you're a single people with more money are obviously going to find this easier because the coercive factor isn't as high like it's fucking gross sorry I'm enraged mm. by that I knew this would enrage you Andrew really good save for the end of the episode thank you <laughs> yeah, to, to offer a Helen like suggestion oh here we go Um, I think you should all, all 42 should take a sick day on the same day and if anyone scabs uh, infect them with something <laughs> And it's so easy to infect people with something. There's so many ways. You can give someone food poisoning from like one takeaway like that. Like, Do you know what's the worst part is? You know what the worst part is? You what? could literally say, hey, here's a workplace goal. You know that thing that is actually your job? Here's a goal that we'd like you to achieve by this time. If you do it, 
we will incentivize that by taking you all out for an event that'll cost us much money, or we will split this amount of money between you. Not if you f- if you fail to be a machine until wait. Then. I just realised the absolute hypocrisy of us right now. Didn't we all make a pact last year that none of us would go to A and E for like six weeks? Oh, oh, <laughs> Didn't we like announce the that on day? the podcast? And then Andrew got an ambulance within twenty four hours. But Helen. And we were like, we promise, Helen, none of us will do hospital again. <laughs> and then you nearly but exploded Helen. full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and Andrew called an ambulance. But Helen, two things. One, Andrew, we are a drain on the NHS. It wasn't binding in the way that Andrew, because Andrew felt like he could get an ambulance. He texted us and we were all like, go to the hospital. <laughs> and B, you and I needed to make that promise because it would be like if the whole office hadn't come in for six months. <laughs> We're not a good metric. Please carry on. Uh, that's fucking disgraceful. We just love the hospital. I actually think that has to be somehow illegal. Mm, it is. Uh, it for sure is. Yeah, surely. That's uh, fucking disgraceful. But maybe because it's like an opt-in bonus scheme, they like cover it like it's not compulsory to take part of it. Maybe. I'm just wondering. I'm spitballing, guys. But it's coers. Oh, listen, it's fucking disgusting. Whoever you are, you employer, you're a piece of shit. Mm. Unless you're build a bear, in which case we admire you your sick. work. That's also the thing. Yeah. Like, the fucking... Oh, Thank you so much for listening to Trusty Hogs. Catherine's in a great space right now. Um, yeah, um, there's power in the union, power, power in, in the land, land. Power, power in the hands of the, the worker. worker. And it all amounts to nothing if together we don't stand. There is power in the union. union. Nice. Thank you so much for listening to Trusty Hogs. Please give us really good ratings and reviews. We want more on iTunes. We want more on Spotify. Give us YouTube comments and we'll see you next week.